chess has never been a game that moved particularly fast. And that's not just on the board. When it comes to involving women at the game's highest levels, some would describe the progress in chess culture as glacial. It's just a pure number game. I mean, like, men have been playing the game, they've been taking it up. It's, it's a very new sport for women. Uh, it's only over the last few years that it has been a career option for women. Traditionally, chess was uh, passed down father to son. And the game continues to be male-dominated. Rich says even today, the membership of the U.S. Chess Federation is 95% male. 95%. Making a dent in that requires making the St. Louis Chess Club an attractive place for girls to walk in the door. One way they are doing this is with the Cairns Cup, a women-only tournament in St. Louis recently that brought some of the top female players in the world to square off with the winner walking away with $40,000 in prize money. That is almost unprecedented. The Cairns Cup claims to be the world's first women's tournament with such a prize. Ten of the world's best were here to play. They came from a variety of countries, mostly in Europe, as well as the United States. Top Chinese players were noticeably absent. The goal is to create an environment where top women can win, remain focused on chess, and thus improve. Organizers believe this is the route to women rising in the rankings and becoming competitive with the top men in the game. So this is the first tournament where there's real cash money for women only. Okay, it's a rare event. But that means if they win or they do well in the tournament, that gives them enough money for the next year to focus on chess. And that's how you get better. Dr. Jeannie Singfield and her husband Rex are the philanthropists who got the St. Louis Chess Club off the ground and who have created the Cairns Cup to reinforce the top end of the women's game, creating idols for the youngsters. When young girls see all these top female players come to their country to play the sport and to win the big bucks, they want to be like that when they grow up. They want to qualify to this tournament, they want to play such tournaments, and this is just, you see, the future of chess. I am surprised by that. I thought more women played chess. New Kirkwood High School Chess Club member Maddie Barton has only played with family and friends and wasn't aware that she is a rarity. In my experience, it's always been pretty equal with the people I've played with and people I've seen playing chess. But she clearly has not seen the full chess club here gathered at one time. I would say we have probably between 20 and 30 kids signed up to be as part of the chess team here at the high school, and two of those are girls. Club sponsor Cindy Coronado says the girls tend to simply walk by during recruiting season. Part of their problem, she says, is the chess club has to compete with other clubs and sports for members. It's also relatively new in its fourth year. A lot of the girls just keep walking. You know, we try to pull them in and sometimes we bake brownies and try to get them in through those means and uh, we have not been successful. I wish I had a secret recipe to, to be more inclusive, but we just aren't there. Maddie believes more exposure in school for the game will do the trick. You know, after school care, if they had, um, along with coloring and all the gym games that they play, if they also offered chess boards and you can play chess and talk about the rules and just more opportunities to play. On that grassroots front, the St. Louis Chess Club is doing events focused on girls to get interest in the game among the young to build and sustain. They have nights dedicated to female play, which has been popular with moms and daughters. The club was also home to a girls-only merit badge class, which led to the first girls in the newly co-ed Boy Scouts of America to earn the honor. The first girls who have joined Scouts BSA who earned the chess merit badge were from this council in Missouri. They are now looking for ways to grow their program to keep girls engaged longer. You know, what we've seen in our scholastic chess programs is that for the most part until maybe middle school or high school, boys and girls play chess in equal numbers. Starting in high school is where you really see those numbers change. They say succeeding with girls in chess is about much more than putting players at high levels in the game. I have this foundation on neural feedback and neural science, and there are three activities your entire brain lights up, okay? Math, music, and chess. So if you want an activity for your daughters that teaches them to be effective in using the entire brain, 
chess can be one of them. I think definitely chess breaks gender barriers. It's a level field. Uh, everybody can play everyone. And they're now progressing toward making the numbers as level as the board. But like everything about chess, they say it's going to take time.